waved to him, and Joe waved, and I waved, and the man. The man. That's all right, sir. You were as, as he as he was waving back, he was he was the shot rang out, and he slumped down in the seat, and his wife reached up toward him, and as he, as he was slumping down, and the second shot went off, and it just knocked him down from. From the seat, the two shots. Two shots. Did you see the man who did the? No, sir, I did not see the man who did it. I, I, all I, all I did was look in the man's face when he was shot there and saw that expression on his face and grab himself and slide. And the second one, whenever it went, why, I'm positive it hit him. I hope it didn't, but I'm positive that it hit him and it's and he went all the way down in the car. Then they speeded up and I didn't know what was going on, so I just grabbed the boy and fell on him in the hopes that there wasn't a maniac around. I'm sorry. I can't help you more, but I, I won't forget it. Still, we have a, a few additional details on what uh, took place aboard the Air Force jet as it was still at the airport in Dallas uh, for the swearing in of uh, President Johnson. He, of course, had been sped away from the hospital where President Kennedy had died just moments before. When he left, we did not know where he was going nor the route that he would take to get there. Security officials said later that this was for security reasons. When he arrived at the plane, he was, in fact, President of the United States, but he had not been sworn in, and the judge had been uh, taken to the field to perform the ceremony. However, President Johnson decided to delay the ceremony until Mrs. Kennedy, who was still at the hospital, could arrive back at the plane. When she did arrive, uh, the ceremony was staged in the, in the executive lounge of the airplane, and uh, President Johnson, with his uh, right hand raised and his left hand on a small Bible that had been... Uh, provided for the ceremony, took the oath of office as President of the United States. Standing on his right was his wife, Lady Bird Johnson, and on his left what can only be described as a stunned and grief-stricken uh, Mrs. Jacqueline Kennedy. Immediately the ceremony was over, uh, Dallas Police Chief J.E. Curry, who had driven with uh, President Johnson to the airport, turned to the First Lady and said, um, the whole nation mourns your husband, but uh, God bless you, little lady, you ought to go back and lie down. Mrs. Kennedy said, no thanks, I'm fine, and stayed where she was for a moment, but a few moments later she did go to another part of the airplane, the compartment containing the body of the president, which was in the casket, and the reports are that she spent most of the return flight there along with the body of her husband. Uh, this is the announced order given from the White House this evening. Uh, the plane is due in in roughly a half hour or so, about 6.05 at Andrews Air Force Base outside Washington, carrying President Johnson and the body of President Kennedy. At 10 tomorrow morning in the East Room of the White House, the President's family will go in to view the body. At 11 o'clock, President Johnson, Speaker of the House McCormick, and members of the executive branch who hold presidential appointments. At 2 tomorrow afternoon, members of the Supreme Court and the federal, federal judiciary will go in to view the body. At 2.30, members of the Senate, the House of Representatives, the governors of the 50 states and of the territories. And at 5 tomorrow afternoon, the body will be viewed by members of the diplomatic corps. There is still no formal word from the White House on when the public will be permitted to view the president's body. Uh, at the executive mansion, they are thinking that the body will lie in state at the Capitol later for that purpose, possibly Sunday or Monday, and uh, still yet to be determined, with the family understandably trying to cope with what happened today rather than trying to look forward to arrangements for what must be done in the future, there is still no firm word of where final services for the president will take place, nor is there yet any decision uh, on where the president will be buried. There is, of course, the tradition of ceremonies in the Capitol, burial at Arlington for the president. There is also the fact that the president is from Massachusetts, that uh, the family has exceedingly strong ties to and in the state, and it might well be that... Uh, the president's family will desire that the mass, the requiem mass, be said in Boston, perhaps by Cardinal Cushing, who is an extremely close friend of the Kennedy family, and that the president may uh, go to his final resting place in the Kennedy family plot in Massachusetts. Frank? Just to say, Bill, that um, the family is gathering, so to speak. Uh, the president's younger brother, Ted Kennedy, Senator Edward Kennedy of Massachusetts, was, um, as it happened, actually presiding over that body this afternoon when he received word of the assassination of his brother in Dallas. And he left immediately. He was joined by a sister, the wife of uh, Sergeant Shriver, head of the Peace Corps. And they flew immediately to uh, Massachusetts to be with the president's mother and father who are there. 
Uh, the two Kennedy children were at the White House at the time. We still do not know if they have learned of their father's passing. We are was, told, Frank, in reports they have not They have not, told. fine. Uh, there was a suggestion earlier that uh, they would leave that for Mrs. Kennedy. Yes, sir. And um, the president's maternal grandmother, who is 98 years old and lives in, um, in Massachusetts, has not been informed of the passing of her grandson. We have some reaction now from, uh, from the Soviet Union. Foreign Minister Andrei Gramyko telephoned United States Ambassador Foy D. Kohler at midnight at the embassy residence in Moscow to express his shock and greatest sympathy to the American peoples. Uh, he told the ambassador, official condolences will be conveyed later at the highest level. Well, this obviously was a reference to Soviet Premier Khrushchev. The people of Russia have been told of the passing of President Kennedy. We do not as yet have any formal expression from the Soviet leadership. Pope Paul VI in Rome, who was visited by President Kennedy shortly after his coronation in Italy uh, earlier this year, has uh, made some comment on the passing of the president. A report on that now from NBC's correspondent in Rome, Irving R. Levine. Pope Paul VI has just sent this message to the American people. We are profoundly stricken by the tragic and sad news of the assassination of the President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and of the grave wounding of Governor Conley. We are profoundly saddened by such a shocking crime, by the mourning which strikes through its leader a great and civilized country, by the sorrow which afflicts Mrs. Kennedy, her children, and all her relatives. Pope Paul's message continues, we deplore with all our hearts this event. We express the hope that the death of this great statesman will not bring damage to the American people, but will reinforce their moral and civil sense and strengthen their sentiments of nobility and of peace. We pray to God that the sacrifice of John Kennedy will aid the cause promoted by him for the defense of the liberty of peoples and of peace in the world. The Pope's message goes on. He was the first Catholic president of the United States. We remember to have had the honor of his visit and to have found in him great wisdom and high ideals for the welfare of humanity. Tomorrow we will offer a holy mass for the peace of his soul, for the comfort of those who mourn his death, and so that not hatred, but love will reign among the human race. That is the message to the American people from Pope Paul VI. A message from Pope Paul VI in Rome, relayed by NBC's Rome correspondent Irving R. Levine. Not only was uh, Mr. Kennedy the first Catholic president of the United States, he was the youngest, and his administration, which did not fill out its four-year term, will perhaps be best remembered by the extremely serious uh, challenge to this country and indeed to the entire Western world, represented by the Soviet installation of guided missiles on the island of Cuba uh, in October of last year. The president's response to that situation uh, won him praise from all the leaders of the Western world. In the field of foreign affairs, it is perhaps true that history will record this as his most significant achievement. In the field of domestic affairs, although it's presumptuous to guess about these matters, it would certainly seem to his contemporaries uh, that his um, being confronted with and the reaction of the administration to the Negro drive for equal rights in this country will perhaps be listed as the major challenge uh, to his administration. We have a reaction also from, do you have uh, hard information? Do you that America today is stronger than ever before. Our adversaries have not abandoned their ambitions. Our dangers have not diminished. Our vigilance cannot be relaxed, but now we have the military, the scientific, and the economic strength to do whatever must be done for the preservation and promotion of freedom. That strength will never be used in pursuit of aggressive ambitions. It will always be used in pursuit of peace. It will never be used to promote... that we may be worthy of our power and responsibility, that we may exercise our strength with wisdom and respect, and that we may achieve in our time, and for all time, the ancient vision of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That must always be our goal, 
and the righteousness of our cause must always underlie our strength. For as was written long ago, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. The last three paragraphs of the speech President Kennedy was on his way to deliver when he was assassinated in Dallas, Texas this afternoon. I would like to remind you again that these regulations uh, have been canceled for the remainder of this broadcast day. We will, however, remain on the air to bring you all developments as promptly as we receive them in the way assassination of uh, our president. Now we pause for station identification. As I started to say a moment ago, we have uh, this reaction from Sir Winston Churchill, the wartime leader of the United Kingdom. He said tonight that the assassination of President Kennedy is a monstrous act which has taken from us a great statesman and a wise and valiant man, a World War II leader who will be 89 years old on the 30th of November, issued a statement from his London residence after listening to television accounts of the president's death. The loss to the United States and to the world is incalculable, Sir Winston declared. Those who came or those who come after Mr. Kennedy must strive the more to achieve the ideals of world peace and human happiness and dignity to which his presidency was dedicated. A spokesman for Sir Winston said he and Lady Churchill sat up past 10 p.m. to keep in touch with developments over television, which is quite a late hour for a gentleman of his age. We also have a reaction from New Jersey's Governor Hughes. I believe this is uh, voice only. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. We would like you to hear now the comments of New Jersey Governor Hughes on the passing of President Kennedy. Here, in the dark, an honor guard now walking up to the tail of the presidential jet. They're from Bowling Air Force Base, where the regular honor guard that usually dispatches the president as well as welcomes him when he returns to Washington. helicopter has just landed, making a great deal of noise. What you see is a special truck that has been moved up to the rear of the presidential special truck on which the coffin will be brought out. A helicopter is standing by just near the presidential jet to take the coffin away. The men are now struggling with the casket. It appears to be the casket struggling to get it out of the plane. bright, shining casket glistening in the lights here at the airport. The casket is as dark brown in color, slightly reddish. It looks as if it's bronze.
possibly to Bethesda Naval Hospital. 